Do you struggle with how to finish the inside of your cards? Today, I've got 10 fantastic and easy solutions. Let's get crafting. Number one is to use die cuts that are either the same or from the same family of dies. Like in this case, I used a cake with a piece cut out and I used the piece on the inside of this card. Here's another example for this thank you card where I have a bug on the outside and a die cut bug for the inside as well. Number two is to use patterned paper to enhance the inside of your card. I used the exact same striped pattern paper, cut a vertical strip, and lined the fold of the inside of my card for a simple yet effective element. In this example, I'm using green pattern paper on the inside of my card to simulate grass as it peeks through the fence line. Number three is to add multiple elements to the inside of your cards. Here, I've got a lot of pattern paper but I did a, a solid die cut of the bunny in a different color along with a different pattern paper from the same pad. So I know that all the colors would go together. A bunny in a pattern paper would be fun as well. Number four is to finish the inside of your cards with background stamps. Now in this case, I have heat embossed a large background stamp with some bridal tinsel um, embossing powder. And then I used the same ink that I ink blended the front, which was tumbled glass, and stamped the inside. Number five is using your stencils on the inside of your cards. Here I used a very inexpensive Dollar Tree stencil on the outside, and then I used Lost Shadow Distress Oxide with the same stencil along with a sentiment. Hey y'all! I'm Wendy from Village Card and Craft, and I want to thank you so much for choosing to spend your time with me today. If you're finding value or enjoyment from my videos, please consider giving me a thumbs up and hitting the subscribe button. I'd love to have you be a part of the Village Card and Craft community. It is free to subscribe, and you'd be helping me to grow my community as I am trying to reach my next goal of 10,000 subscribers. The sixth thing you can do on the inside is simply die cut a sentiment. Now I'm going to use this large scrapbook.com word die called I Love You and it has a shadow die with it as well. But I'm going to take my white cardstock and die cut it from the center and I used the shadow for the green and all I did was tape the shadow back right to the back side of my white cardstock and I'm going to add the centers back into the O's. Now, if you like the look of not adding it, you certainly could, but there are two ways to make sure you get proper placement. Put your O's back into the words, and then you can either add glue to the inside part, which is what I've done for this one, lay it in after you fight with it. I'm gonna win this battle and then you remove the outside O by holding that inside down. Or you can go ahead and simply add glue to the inside of the O, very small amounts. You don't want it to squish and hold down the O. Um, but this was easier for me. I just went ahead and placed the center in and held that down and removed the larger O. Number seven, using frames around your sentiments on the inside of your cards. Now I'm going to be adding a sentiment to this particular embossed vellum card, and I'm gonna be using this art impression stamp set, wishing you all the joy your heart can hold. Because the outside says love you in gold, I'm going to be bringing in the gold and the red from the front of the card. Now I did choose to use my stamping platform because I wanna make sure I have plenty of space for my sentiment within the area that I'm going to be using that frame. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line that up. I will be stamping this up with Versamark Clear Sticky Embossing Ink and Ranger Super Fine Detail White Embossing Powder. Now if you recall the beginning of the card or the front of the card, is vellum that was embossed. And when vellum is embossed, it turns the vellum white. So by using the white embossing powder, I'm bringing that detail back into the center of the card as well.
hang with me to the very end because I am going to share some super exciting news. Number eight is to use removable tape on an insert. Now for this thank you card, I have cut down a piece of regular computer paper to four by five and a quarter, so it will fit nicely inside. Now I'm going to take some Tombow removable adhesive, it's a tape runner, and I'm just going to add it to the top of this particular piece of paper. It makes it like a sticky note, and go ahead and lay it inside. That way I can handwrite a personal note of thanks, and I can also leave a little message that the note card can come out, and then they can repurpose that card as well. Number nine is to use washi tape to decorate the interior of your card. Now this card was done with washi tape for the outside, and I'm going to use some of the remaining washi tape that I have to just give the inside a little bit. You'll see that I've stamped off a sentiment for the center already, and I'm going to go ahead and add that washi tape to the lower right hand side of my cardstock. Now you can choose to not wrap it around the back, but I almost always do. And the reason is that washi tape is very low tack, especially if it's been sitting around for a while, it might not really work the way that it did when you originally bought it. So I find that if I just wrap it around the back, even if it starts to unravel, it won't really matter because I'm gonna go ahead and glue that cardstock down to the actual card base. Number 10 is using printables. Now this particular card, I already have two printables on the face of the card and I'm going to find something for the inside. And I wanted something that matches. Obviously this is a fall themed card. It says, hey there pumpkin. I'm going to my sentiments book where I keep all of these type of things. Now this particular printable had quite a few items and it was a freebie that I had gotten quite a while ago from a magazine. So I print it out on heavyweight cardstock, fussy cut them out, store them in my little binder so that I can use them for future projects. I'm going to be using this little uh, leaf and acorn and I think I'm going to use the little wagon. I like that it ties together with the pumpkin on the front. I've selected a sentiment that used to be a woodblock sentiment and um, I removed it from the woodblock. If you'd like to see how I did that, I will link that video above for you. But I did save space. It is not perfectly centered on purpose. I wanted to put the little uh, acorn and leaves up at the top left. So I maneuvered that sentiment over to the right a bit and just left space. It's time to glue my little uh, printable onto the left side of my cardstock. I'm gonna hold it down with a block. This is just some old countertop block. This is a sample, so that works out great for me. And I'm gonna add my favorite liquid glue, which is Fairly Arts Precision Craft Glue, and go ahead and add that to the center of my card. And this one is done. With so many people asking me how to finish the inside of a card, I thought this was a great way to show you 10 different techniques to do just that. And I sincerely hope that you found something that you love and can implement into your own card making. As far as my exciting news, I'm glad you stuck around because I'm super excited. I am launching a digital store. And because you guys have stuck with me through thick and thin and you have made it to the end of this video, I am going to share my very first product free with you. And there's gonna be a coupon code and a link to my freebie in the description box. That coupon code is good for a limited time. So if you're watching the replay, head on over there to see whether or not that coupon code is still available. I have created a printable sentiment book, okay? There are 54. 54 
individual sentiments, some of which I've also included a second time. The second time, the duplicate is not counted in that 54, so you're getting 54 regular use sentiments, okay? So here's an example. The thinking of you is done twice. That's only counted once. Let me explain some things about my printables. Some of the things that make me crazy when I purchase or get even get a freebie on printables is that they're all over the page. Sometimes they're on the sides. You have to turn it. It makes it a pain in the neck to use a paper trimmer on it. And that's the fastest way to cut them apart. However, I've left you enough space and everything's on the same line, so you can use a paper trimmer if that's what you have, or you can use dies. There are enough spaces between the sentiments for you to use a die. For example, I've used a little banner die for this thinking of you. And I've used a label die for this with sympathy. So there's plenty of space for you to cut them out however you wish. Um, sometimes you just want to get her done. You can use scissors if that's what you have. So remember, head over to the description box. I've got the link and the freebie code there. Okay, the next thing. You guys have shown me so much love over the embossing technique videos that I did recently that I created a full digital download of all 20 techniques that will also be listed in the description box for you. You can print this out on copy paper. You can laminate it. You can put it into a clear page protector and put it in a binder. You can copy them or print them out on cardstock. Mine is on cardstock. Um, you can cut them apart and put a ring on them so you have all 20 techniques at your fingertips for when you're looking for something different to do. So this is called 20 Sensational Embossing Folder Techniques. I've got some tips on this side. And they all will include the name of the embossing folder technique, some tips and tricks on how to get the best out of that technique, as well as a full digital photograph of a finished product for you. So I've included all 20 in this download. Looking for more inspiration? Check out these other videos here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon.